seeing the skills, it's, it's really difficult. It's difficult not to say something. It's difficult not to get angry. You can't because you're surrounded by Muti practitioners and you can't be seen as biased, but it, it leaves you with a lump in your throat. And it makes you, it makes you work harder. It makes you determined to make a difference and to stop that. Living on a farm as a non-married girl is completely against the norms. My parents think I'm insane. Working with the species that I do, and my dad often says to me, you know, Kerry, can't you choose a nice looking bird to work with? But you know what? I suppose it's good to be different. I love living on the farm. I love vultures with, with the most incredible passion because they're so different. I don't quite fit the norm as living in town and I think it, it would kill me. Vultures have an incredible role in our environment. There is no other species that can consume an animal that has died of a disease that is highly contagious. There's only a vulture that can consume a carcass riddled with a contagious disease and they are not affected. And what they do by that is they eliminate any chance of that infection spreading elsewhere. With regards to our health, the livestock health, our wildlife, they actually reduce the spread of diseases and they make our planet a healthier place to live in. What's happening is they're seeing the movement. Um, and although we kind of perceive them as being these aggressive birds, they're very skittish. They'll only land at a site if they feel safe. Um, and the fact that they're seeing movement here makes them a little bit wary. So they'll rather come back when they don't see any movement. Basically, the problem with restaurants is that they're not managed correctly. there and has been treated by a vet for example and it's been treated with a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug sometimes those drugs are highly toxic to the birds it hasn't happened yet yeah but the thing is the number of birds keep declining so it could be happening every day and we're just not aware of it through the years our vulture numbers have declined rapidly you're looking at only 2,900 breeding pairs left globally. They're extinct already in Swaziland. They're extinct as a breeding species in Zimbabwe. And they're critically endangered in Namibia with only 12 wild cave vultures left. That's really a real threat. We could potentially lose our birds. Birds were worshipped. I mean, if you go back into the Egyptian days, the sun god, Re, you know, the, those were the symbols, a, a vulture was the symbol. And our materialistic needs and drives have forgotten our early cultures. As humans continue along our paths, we're overpopulating the world. And we are, we are taking away the habitat from our birds. With your overpopulation and your urbanization, you need more power lines, you need more electricity. The birds fly into it and collide in the overhead wires and unfortunately break their wings and meet their untimely death. So through our overpopulation, we're killing our species. This is the only enclosure of its kind in probably Africa, even probably in the world. You won't find anything else like this that, that has an enclosure full of vultures with, with a power line. One for you, one for you. If you see these, these spikes, or what we call them, instead of going and putting those into the field, we're testing them first, because you don't want the birds to sit there. And as you can see, the, the one bird is sitting next to it and not right on that, that exact spot. 
And we are, are allowing the birds to teach us how to protect them instead of us trying to protect the birds without actually not knowing a hang of a lot about it. Hello. How many did you catch? Cap or white back? Okay, Laka, we're on our way. We've just got a call um, that my students called a vulture near Pilensburg. So um, we're going to go through and tag it and put a cell phone device on it. Until we started tracking the birds, we actually had very limited knowledge, although we appeared to know a lot about the birds, and we really didn't know about the foraging or distribution behavior. Well, I think it's a female cave vulture. Um, I think quite an old cave vulture looking at the condition. She seems to be dehydrated. It's not very hot today, and she hasn't been inside the enclosure for long. I just suspect it's, it's possibly her age. I think would be quite interesting is putting a device on her. Um, she is weak, but the thing is she could probably tell us a little bit of why she's in this type of condition, which is what we really want to know and how we can protect these birds. Strong enough. We put wing tags on the birds and that's for um, reciting purposes. You're not going to be able to see this number, but you'll be able to see the big yellow tags on the birds. And then some birds are fortunate enough getting a cell phone device, which is what we're putting on her as well. The eyes are supposed to be the doorway into the future. And if you look at the, the kind of opaque and colour. You want to look straight through the eye. Having that incredible opaque appearance in the eyes and, and that mesmerising appeal, people believe that vultures are the, the path into the future and they believe vultures are clairvoyant. And unfortunately that has led to a lot of the birds being used for the mooty trade. A lot of people believe that if you eat a brain of a vulture or you sleep with a skull under your pillow, you're going to be able to see into the future and either select the correct lotto numbers or any way of being able to foresee into the future. What these birds sometimes do is they sometimes kind of become quite submissive like she has. Sometimes they play dead. So it wouldn't surprise me if she decides to fly off nicely, but basically anything can happen. Watching these birds and being able to lie back and see them soaring it would be nice for just once to actually have that experience and have that feeling of complete freedom. I must be honest, if I get an opportunity and, and I can perhaps fly with the birds, I think it would be a huge life-changing experience. Cool, eh? If you look straight above you. It's the wind in their wings. You hear it?
flying up there, they're inquisitive. They fly with you. If you start thermaling up, they follow you. It's, it's quite incredible. They play with you and they have, they have fun. And it's almost as if they call everyone because you might start with one or two and the next minute you know you've got 200 flying with you. And you look up and the sky is just covered in vultures. That's incredible. That is freedom. You know, you're flying up there, the sun is going down. It is peaceful, it is quiet. There's no war, there's no, there's no cars, there's no sirens. It's just being one with nature. You see things from a different perspective there. You can hear the wind in their wings. They look down at you. They are free, and we want to be free, and that's what they are. So seeing them in enclosure, they're not free. You know, unfortunately, we have confined them. It's allowed us to learn about them and to protect them. But having and giving them that freedom, that's what life's about. Being in the sky with them during sunset was a life-changing experience. It was spiritual. Your passion just double folds. It's just, you, you just want to make a bigger difference. You want to kind of get people and shake them and say, gosh, look, look at what you're doing to this world, you know? You got to go up there, you got to experience it. And only then, I think, will people truly realize 